It is freezing outside, but all good. I got my Winnie the Pooh cup to keep me warm. Today, we are going to talk about dealer delta hedging and the options chain. How does it work? Exactly what it means. How institutions position their hedges on both monthly and quarterly OPEC states. This is incredibly important to understand. One of the main reasons how liquidity kept circling within the market from the October 2022 low all the way to the January inauguration of Trump all-time high on the S&P 500. We are going to review three major trends trades and how dealers delta hedge those trades in order to push the market up on low institutional volume. We are also going to review in general what options are, how they work, the bid ask spread, um, delta, open interest, and functionality within the trades themselves. It is crucial to understand these methodologies if you are going to understand why the market moves when basically no news is coming out and makes aggressive moves into OPEC states based off the amount of open interest on the call and put side on the chain. The world of derivatives is a large one. It's in the quadrillions, okay? This is much, much larger than anything you see in the M1 and M2 money supply, both domestically and globally. If you think in terms of asset classes, securities within, and then products within, derivatives are a subset product tied to an underlying security. They fall under that security bracket under products. For example, if you're looking at an asset class of equities and you're looking at a security of Tesla, the underlying subset product of Tesla could be a Tesla spot trade, or in derivatives terms, it could be an option, a swap, a forward, put on the Tesla equity security, which is Tesla stock. Now, what are options specifically? Options are contracts that give the owner the right, but not the obligation to buy or sell an asset using that for leverage or hedging, or even just flat out offense, speculation, whether you are directionally trading, believing a market is going to go in a certain direction up or down or maybe a market's moving flat and you just wanna trade it and receive premiums for your trade. So you write calls or puts and you sell to open. That is just one of the various ways that pension funds, insurance firms, asset managers, um, and, and banks of all kinds conduct business on a day-to-day -day basis to receive money in various different ways, diversifying their portfolio for both income and revenue streams. Remember, options are mostly used for insurance. They're used for defense. So institutions of various kinds are hedging the market using the option chain because it's cheaper and it's a different price than what the underlying, uh, shorting the underlying stock would actually be. And remember, these firms are so big in the hundreds of billions, they're invested in equities, FX, fixed income, commodities, crypto, real estate, alternative assets. They are constantly hedging to make sure that they are protected on all sides of their trade and their investments. If you're a firm worth $50 billion and you may be buying $100 million worth of Tesla puts, the numbers really matter. You need to make sure that you are getting the most efficient um, amount of leverage for the money that you're putting in the trade. Think about it if you were going to buy a car without car insurance, but that car was a thousand horsepower Lamborghini. You needed to make sure that no matter what, that something can always and probably will go wrong at some point in the future. You need to be hedged at all times, whether it's option swaps um, or forwards, some type of derivative trade to make sure you have insurance on your portfolio. So I want to break this down for you simply in a couple of ways. First, we're going to talk about the bid ask spread. Then we're going to talk about what Delta means. And then we're going to talk about the options, open interest in volume and contracts just on the chain. So you can understand how hedging works on both the call and put side of the chain for every OPEX, quarterly OPEX, leap OPEX months. We're going to be looking at the December 19th OPEX chain, and I'll use Tesla as your security example. We are looking at the December 19th Tesla options chain. This is the call side. This is the put side and your trading price that you are currently at on Tesla as a share is $440. And that's where the chain splits here because this is what you're talking about when you say the term at the money. If you were to buy a Tesla put to hedge your Tesla longs that you have in shares, you could buy a strike anywhere above or below. Below on the put side would be in the money and above on the put side will be out of the money because you want your trade to go negatively. If you're buying puts, that's negative delta. You want Tesla stock to move downward so your trade becomes more negative delta. The options price increases and you end up making more money. We briefly talked about the bid ask spread before, but what is it actually? The bid is the highest price that buyers are willing to pay. The ask is the lowest price that sellers are willing to sell at. When you're looking at a bid ask spread, what you have to remember is that price that you are seeing on whatever brokerage platform you're using. It doesn't matter if it's Robinhood, uh, TD, Fidelity, Schwab, Webull, et cetera. 
That price is coming from a dealer or a market maker of some kind. Someone is making that spread to you. It is crucial for you to understand what the difference is between a dealer and a market maker because these terms are construed consistently on social media and analyzed the wrong way. To make it simple, okay, a market maker is the one making the price to you. They're making the bid ask spread to you. They have a tighter liquidity stream on their end in which they see a tighter spread and they're making the spread to you wider so they can make more money off of each trade. They only care about trading volume and that is it. As many times as you click the bid or ask is as much money as they are excess making based off charging more widening that spread on your platform. Now a dealer is the one taking all the risk. Okay, they're the one pricing the options. They're the ones that are delta hedging. They're the ones on the opposite side of the trade. So when you buy a call, they're the one writing the call to you. Or when you write a call, they're the one buying the call on the opposite end. Now, diving back into the chain, here's your bid, here's your ask. Okay, this is the spread and the difference in between. The bid is the highest price buyers are willing to pay for this strike and for this put option. The ask is the lowest price sellers are willing to sell at for this strike for this put option. Remember, when you are buying options contracts, it is one contract per 100 shares. So when you see that ask price at 375 strike, you are looking at paying $1.65 per contract, but it's 100 shares. So you times that by 100, meaning one contract of this put option at 375 strike is going to cost you $165, okay? So the equation that you have to remember is amount of contracts, times 100, because that's how many shares are in each contract, times the ask price or the bid price. And that will give you the total amount and how much your trade costs when you execute on your brokerage platform. The function of what dealers and market makers do is to get as much volume of you clicking that bid or ask all day, every day, as much as possible. The more you click, the more money they make. They take a little bit of percent of profit off of that bid ask spread and the money comes rolling in on every single zero DTE, every single one or two DTE, day six expiry or weekly options. If you add up all the amount of volume that is done on a weekly basis, especially with the meme stocks, you have to understand that these dealers and market makers have Christmas morning every single Friday. They are walking away with billions of dollars, especially when speculation is high, like during the meme stock GameStop craze in 2021. Okay, back to the December 19th Tesla chain, we are going to look at the Delta column now. Your Delta is how much an option price changes based off a $1 change in the underlying security. For example, let's say you bought a 440 strike call on Tesla and you want that option to gain more value. So you want that Delta to go from 0.59, which it is here, closer to 1.0, because that's the absolute highest Delta can go on the call side. You buy the 440 strike, Tesla then goes to let's say $445 on its security your 59 cent delta is going to rise to let's say 63 cents or something like that. How much that rises is how much your option price is going to rise, going to rise 63 cents per dollar. Contrarily on the put side, it's the opposite. If you're buying a put that's negative delta, as you can see, there's a negative sign in your delta column in between the bid ask spread. If you were to buy a 440 strike put, you are expecting the market and Tesla stock to move downward. So you buy that 440, it's at negative 0.4. You want the opposite of this contract. You don't want it to go closer to 1.0. You want it to go closer to negative one. That makes it more worthy in value because it's negative delta on the opposite side of the chain. Let's say Tesla stock starts dropping. It goes from 440 to 435. Your puts will go from 0.40 delta and they will rise in value to 0 0.43, 0 0.45, 0 0.47. And that is how much your option contract will gain in value and you will make more money the closer you get to negative 1.0. Okay, we've been through a lot today. This is going to be the end of part one. Part two, I'm gonna start off by talking about open interest and how both open interest on the call and put side matter to where institutions are hedging on their monthly and quarterly OPEX expiration dates and how this affects dealers on the opposite side and how they have to delta hedge these calls and puts in order to remain delta neutral at all times.